Today, I'm going to help you focus on three big main concepts so that you can make changes that you wish for in your eating and your weight more easily. So join me in this year-end coaching session right now. You are listening to Weight Loss Made Real, and this is episode 255. I'm your host, master weight loss coach and author, Cookie Rosenblum. Today and every Tuesday, I will be your coach and your guide to help you end that emotional eating and lose that extra weight. If you just found me, welcome. And if you're a regular listener, welcome back, my friend. You know this is where we talk about your habit of emotional eating and habitual overeating, which is the main focus of all the work I do. This is where coaching meets psychology and psychology meets brain science. And this is where your problem ends. So get comfy and get ready to be coached. Before we begin, I want to announce to you that we have a free master class coming up soon in just a few weeks. So be sure to listen today until the end or check the show notes if you would like to attend. We're going to teach you strategies of a master coach, that's me, on how to stop your stress eating. So if you eat from any emotion at all, then this class will really help you. Sign up so I can hold a spot for you. We're going to be a tiny bit longer today so I can give you these three important concepts. In the meantime, if you're in a place where you can write, you can sign up right away for the master class on stress eating by going to weightlossmadereal.com slash stress class. All right, so let's dive in. How long have you been listening to me? We started in 2016, and if you've been joining me in these coaching sessions, I know you've learned a lot. Many of you write to me and thank me for what you're learning, and many of you love listening to these coaching sessions and tell me that they're soothing to you, you haven't given up, which is great, but you aren't making progress that you could see yet. So... Let's start the year off, which is coming soon, with some important ideas to help you get what you want most, personal freedom from the struggle with eating and food and your weight. Sound good? All right, let's jump into this session. And by the way, I will put the links to the podcast that I mentioned in the show notes. So if you wish, you can go back and listen and reinforce what you just heard. Now, the first concept that I want you to think about going forward is from episode 204, and the concept is this, belief is more important than strategy. You heard me right. You might think that to lose the weight and the struggle, you need to first know, first and foremost, what do I do? How do I do it? What are my steps? What are my strategies? But that's not what I think. I believe after working with thousands of women that belief has to come before strategy. Belief that this is possible and belief that this is possible for you. I know that if you haven't been successful before, you probably don't have a strong belief in yourself. But belief comes from two things. It certainly can come from experience and proof of something you've already done. But it also comes from a decision, a simple decision to believe in yourself, even if you haven't been able to do this thing before. If anyone can do what you wish you can do, you can do it too. You have to choose to believe this. It won't come naturally. Naturally, you'll look at your past and say, see, I can't do it. You will have to decide this and then practice believing it. Now, without the belief that you can do this, that you can change your thinking and your eating and how you deal with the ups and downs of life, you'll quit at the first obstacle. 
you will give up easily, and you will stay on that eternal search for the right method, the right diet, the right list of what and when and how much to eat. And rarely will you really get what you want. But with it, with the chosen belief that you can change, you're not going to be shocked when you run into an obstacle. You won't interpret the obstacles as a sign to quit. You'll understand that they are the way toward what you want the most. You won't be tempted to make your obstacles mean, okay, time to stop and give up. You'll know that you can do this even though you've never done it before because you have decided to believe that you can. Deciding to believe you can do something is going to help you overcome all kinds of obstacles. Your belief in you, even for something you've never done, is like the gas in your car. It's the fuel that lets you go where you want to go. Without it, you're dependent on all kinds of things that are outside your control. With it, you are driven toward what you want and you won't stop until you get there. Now, you may not know you can reach your goals. So how do I know that you can do this? Because you're human, because you have a brain and your brain has the quality of neuroplasticity. That means it's capable of changing, of rewiring itself, no matter how old you are, no matter how old your habits are. You are here listening and you are capable of change. Please hear this. Now, I know this, but how do you know you could do this? I want you to ask yourself these questions. What have you accomplished in your life that was challenging? What was new that you had never done before and you had to figure out? What have you accomplished that required multiple steps and learning something new? and multiple failures before you got what you wanted. What required asking for help? I can guarantee that in some parts of your life, you have done many new things and didn't stop until you got what you wanted. But for some reason, you think weight loss is different. You think it should be faster or easier or just not going to happen for you and you want proof that you can do it. The truth is that you can figure out how to make changes in your eating and become a natural leader if you make the decision to believe in yourself, to believe in your ability to do this and your ability to figure out how. So the first concept I want you to focus on and decide to live is that your belief in yourself is more important, crucially important than the how part. Because when you decide that you can do something, you will find a way. All the strategies I give you here can definitely work for you, but they all must start with belief in yourself as your foundation. And you can choose to believe. I hope that you do. All right, you ready for concept number two? Here's another concept from this past year that I wanted to revisit with you, and it's from episode 208. And the concept is, thin does not equal happy. Ooh, that's a big one. I could hear you shaking your head and disagreeing with me. It's time for a little bit of tough love today. You know we do this once in a while, and today is the day. I want to clear up a really common misconception that you might be entertaining and it might not be working to your advantage. You might have an assumption, when I lose this weight, I'll be happy. You think that life will be better when you get to a certain weight and that it's just not possible to be happy now if you're carrying extra weight on your body. Is that how you're thinking? Do you think that being at a certain weight just about guarantees happiness? Let's look at where you are right now. You might be unhappy with your weight or your size or how you look, or you might feel stuck in the struggle. You might be obsessing like I used to from morning until I went to bed and throughout the day with that end of the day evaluation of how I did. And of course, it's never good enough, right? 
So you create a fantasy for yourself. And here's the very common theme in your fantasy. When I weigh this, then I'm going to feel this way. Then I'll be able to do this. I'll be able to wear that. Then I'll have my dream relationship. I'll do better in my job. I'll earn more money. I'll love my life more. And all my worries and emotional pain, they'll probably be gone. In other words, you're thinking, when I'm in a smaller body, I'll be happier. So much of what you want is tied up in you being different than you are today. It's like the present version of you is not acceptable. So you're living for the day, you wake up as the more perfect version of you. I want to know, is this how you think? Do you think you'll only be able to be happy when you're in a smaller body? Now, it's true that a lot of our culture supports those kinds of thoughts. That's probably where you got them from, either from our culture or from your early caregivers. You know that I teach women how to eat naturally so they can get to their natural weight and end the whole struggle. Is it wrong to want to be at a smaller weight because you think it will make you happier, that it will be better then? Well, let's look at some facts. Let's take this apart. If thin equals happy, then the only happy people in the world would be thin people. Do you think this is true? If thin equals happy, then people who are not what most in our culture might consider thin would be unhappy. Are you thinking this is true? So what is the true reality here? Here it is. People of all sizes are happy and people of all sizes are unhappy. The bottom line is that wanting to lose weight so that you could achieve happiness probably is not a great idea. First, remember something we've talked about before. Happy is not your end-all, be-all goal. It's not to be happy all the time. To never be sad, upset, or frustrated. To always feel joyful. Because what's the reality for most humans? As I teach it, it's that we're all happy about a third of the time. And we all feel kind of neutral a third of the time. And we're negative a third of the time. No matter who you are, how smart you are, how much time you've spent working on yourself, how educated you are, what kind of job you have or whether you have a job, how much support you have, how much life success you've had, and how much you weigh. No one is happy all the time regardless of their size. Have I opened your eyes a little bit yet? Your goal is one-third, 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 no matter what your weight is and what your struggle is. So what really makes you happy if it's not your weight? It's your thinking. Your whole life doesn't make you happy or unhappy. It's what you think about your life situations. Your weight is just a life situation. It's a fact. It's a number. If you got on the scale and everybody looked at that number although you might not like to do that, everyone who saw your number would agree on that number. It's just a fact. But then there will be some people who look at your number and think, wow, that's wonderful. She's lucky. And some might see it and think, oh, she should really lose some weight. I wouldn't feel good if I weighed that. How could so many people have different thoughts about the same thing? Because that is what happens. There are things in the world that are just facts. And then there are our thoughts, our stories, our interpretation of those facts. Here's some proof. You get on the scale and you see a number. Your number hasn't moved in a few weeks and maybe you're trying to lose some weight. So when you see that number, you feel disappointment. You see that number and you think that's evidence that you're not doing the right things. You might think that number means you're failing, that you can't do this, that you'll never change. But that same number on the scale, someone else could look at and from their perspective might think, wow, I'd love to get to that number. And that would be their truth, their story about that same number, yet so different from your story, right? 
So whether you think something makes you happy or sad, whether you think something is good or bad is true. Here is exactly what I mean. You can be happy right now. You can decide how you want to feel. One thing I always work on with my Freedom Group members in several different ways is showing them how to feel good right now, right from the start, and not wait until they get to that magical number that they wish for to be happy. This means that your journey toward your goal will feel good versus hating where you are until your weight changes. When you could feel good now at your current weight, the journey's easier. You feel better now, and that makes it easier to make better choices. You feel more positive and more capable of taking care of yourself. And if you feel better now, there's a stronger chance that you will stick with your journey to get what you want until you get there. Does this make sense to you? So to come back to our original question, does thin equal happy? The answer is no. Happy thinking one third of the time equals happy. Does extra weight on your body equal unhappy? No. Naturally occurring negative thoughts that come and go unasked for that you practice a third of the time equals your share of unhappy. So if thin doesn't equal happy, can you consider, just consider deciding to feel good right now and deciding to make the journey to your natural body feel so much better right now. Think about this concept that thin does not equal happy. Happy is here inside of you, your mind, your thoughts right now, whatever the scale says. All right, take a minute to absorb that. Take a deep breath. And we're going to move on to the third concept from this past year that I want to make sure you take with you and put your focus on. And that concept is from episode 213. And here it is. You need to learn how to say no to yourself and how to feel good when you say no. Now, let's face it. Most of us hate saying no to ourselves you might also hate saying no to others because you might want to please others. You might be afraid of disappointing them or afraid of their disapproval or afraid of being rejected if you say no. But why might you hate saying no to yourself? Well, remember our talks about your lower brain. Your lower brain is wired to seek pleasure. It's always going to encourage you to get as much of the good stuff in life as you can. We're all wired this way for survival. And that makes us acclimated to constantly getting as much of that good stuff as we can. As much pleasure, as much fun, as much entertainment, as much good food, as much alcohol if you use it, as much processed snacks, as much money. And yet, there really is such a thing as too much of a good thing. You may have a fantasy of having it all, the fantasy of eating everything you want as much as you want. Imagine you at your favorite buffet, looking at food with all the great tastes, very appealing, envisioning eating whatever you wish in whatever quantities you wish, never saying no to yourself and not worrying about the consequences of eating it all. What is your own personal fantasy of getting as much of anything that you want? Do you ever tell yourself that's enough? Or do you always think more is better? I wish I could have more. Although you may fantasize about never having to say no to yourself, that's enough, honey. There are some reasons you don't want unlimited everything, especially food. I want to offer you the idea that it's good to say no to yourself. Whatever you have in your life is a result of all that you have said yes to and no to. Here's the part that you might not like, but I hope you stay with me anyway. Saying no to yourself means you're in charge of you. You're guiding yourself. You're acting in your best interest. You're deciding what you want and you're heading in that direction, 
because you know that the sum of all the things you say yes to and all the things you say no to all add together and give you your results. In order to get what you want, you're selectively saying yes or no to all the things in your life. And of course, here we're talking a lot about your eating, what you say yes or no to in terms of food and eating. Each decision you make in the world of food is going to move you closer or further from what you ultimately want, right? Freedom from the struggle, and for many of you, weight loss. Whether you're aware of it or not, or consciously choosing or not, every yes and every no determines what you get, your life, your weight, everything. In the Freedom Group, when we talk about saying no to ourselves, we talk about it as loving self-discipline. And it's one of our best Freedom Group lessons because the fear of being deprived keeps you overeating and prevents you from saying no to yourself. When I talk about saying no to food, you need to remember that we're talking about saying no first when you're not hungry, and second, if and when you decide that you don't want to eat a certain food right now. For whatever your reason might be, you decide what kinds of foods you eat and when, and what percentage of them might be more helpful and what percentage of them might be less helpful. So there will always be opportunities to eat. And for some of those opportunities, it will be in your best interest to say no thank you. And this is where you might think, oh no, I can't say no. If I do, I'll be deprived and I'll feel restricted. And Cookie, you told me I shouldn't eat that way. So let's clear up the confusion. When you say no, you are not deprived because no one's holding you back from what you need. And what you need is to eat when you're hungry. What you want is not necessarily what you need. If you're listening to me now, it's likely that you have enough food in your life to eat when you're hungry. Your mind will always have unlimited wanting. Your body has limited space. It can't actually eat unlimited quantities. Sometimes saying no to yourself is helpful. So think about that. The next time an opportunity to eat comes up and you are not hungry. All right. I want you to give yourself a pat on the back because you stayed with me. And I hope these three concepts stay with you as we move into the new year. Belief is more important than strategy. Thin does not equal happy. And you do not have to feel deprived when you say no to yourself. Think about these and start practicing, believing them, and see what happens. That is it for our coaching session today. You know what you need to stay focused on and what action step you want to take this week. Now, earlier I told you that we are having a masterclass soon and it is free and I hope you sign up for it if you eat from any emotion. The class is called Three Proven Strategies to End Stress Eating, Secrets of a Master Weight Loss Coach that will help you drop this habit for good. The class is going to be taught live by me, and we're going to have two options of times for you to attend, and it will be recorded. But even if you can't attend live, sign up so that we do give you the recording. And if you can attend live, sign up so that we hold a seat for you. If you eat when you're stressed, you probably think, oh, this is just how I am. You probably think that this is how you'll be forever, but this is not true. Eating from any emotion is a habit and habits can be changed, even habits you've had for many years. And this is exactly what I am going to teach you in this live masterclass, how to disconnect stress from going to food for that very, very temporary relief. 
So this class, as I said, is live, which means that you get to learn a new way to think about stress and undo this habit with me there to guide you. And we will make sure that we make time to answer questions. To sign up, I want you to go to weightlossmadereal.com slash stress class. And I hope to see you there soon. All the details will be in that link if you click it. Today's our opening day to sign up. I hope you are one of the first. Now, I hope to see you back here next week where we will continue to work on your emotional eating and that habitual overeating step-by-step step until they both become something that you used to do. We both know that's your ultimate goal. So for now, this is your Coach Cookie reminding you that as you search for answers, keep it real, my friend, just like you. And I'll see you next week. Bye.